Hello guys, a very good morning. This is Dr. Anjit again. So we have the day nine challenge, right? Uh, I have named the day nine challenge as the quiet monster, right? So we are going steadily. I hope that you are getting your need PG soon. You don't worry about it. Do listen to this video. I just, this is a refreshing session. We are going to see real time cases here, right? Before going on to the day nine challenge, we'll see the questions in day five challenge. I was very glad that many of you are able to answer Sega. The image what you saw yesterday was sub ependymal Jane cell astrocytoma. It's seen in a syndrome associated with tuberous sclerosis. Most of them are with tuberous sclerosis. It's a WHO grade one tumor. Very good prognosis. Excision is a prim preliminary treatment. If possible, if they are big, if they're not accessible, you can use Ephrolimus, which are mTOR pathway inhibitors, which can reduce the growth of these tumors, right? And one important extra information, in case of a sporadic tuberous sclerosis, Tuberous sclerosis can happen even without a family history. In case of sporadic tuberous sclerosis, TAC2 mutation is more common than TAC1 mutation. Fine. That's with this days. Let's go with today's The Quiet Monster. This came today as a 35 year old person with a cervical lymph node. Frozen section was done. Right? Because they were suspecting some other neoplasm, not a lymphoma. So they went ahead to the frozen section. Right. So in frozen section, what you saw was this. You can see here. This part is the capsule of the lymph node, right? You have a thick capsule surrounding. If you look here in this part, I am not seeing any capsule. This is not a good cut. We didn't ask for a repeat because the diagnosis is straightforward and obvious here, right? Generally, capsule should be must. It's required because in the subcapsular area is where I will see the tumor most commonly. So the entire capsule is very, very essential to evaluate, right? So it's a low power image. I just go to a higher power image. It's definitely not a normal lymph node, right? You guys must have picked up the answer easily, right? You can see something abnormal here. Right? It's something like long, long things. If I have to mark and give you a clue, I just mark it. This is the lesion seen here. And an elongated papillary-like area, right? You can see you're seeing a papillary-like area here. In a lymph node of a 35-year-old man. Tell me the possible differential diagnosis, right? I'll leave it open here. The, I want the, it's a metastasis for sure. I want the possible primaries here. Don't give one answer. Tell me what are all the possible primaries we did. We will be doing PAX-8 tomorrow. In the same case, you have to tell what is the importance of PAX-8 in this biopsy. And if I suspect the, if it's a female patient, cervical lymph node with one common primary is thyroid. If it's thyroid, what will be the classical nuclear pattern seen in thyroid neoplasms? That also do comment here, right? So we have three questions today. Do comment here and download the Academy app and we'll see more and more interesting real time cases and we'll hope should hopefully we'll read and become better together, fine? Do comment below and don't be tensed. Your need PG is going to be superbly and very, very good because you've worked for it, right? Comment below. We'll see tomorrow with the answer and one more new case. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjit. Bye-bye.